uh, it's been a while. Hope everybody's doing okay. It's been uh, quite a while since I've actually done one of these videos. So, but uh, yeah, it's been real busy. So down here in Florida, and of course, you know, another tropical system down here. Mm-hmm. Sure. Eh, they're making a lot of hype about it, but no need to worry. It's three to five foot storm surge. It's not anything major. And uh, so, yeah, that's just the way of life it is down here. So, um, here's the thing. Been watching everything that's been going on. And watching how YouTube is continuing to silence people. How Facebook is continuing to silence people. And I know I've said this before, but we really have to get back to some courage and get back to speaking one-to-one -one with people and not being afraid of this political correctness crap, okay? Not being afraid of, uh, you know, being called a homophobe or, a, you know, a racist or, or anything like that. I mean, we, we've really got to just start to be courageous again because social media is slowly eradicating our voices, conservative voices, Christian voices, and this is not going to stop anytime soon. It's really not. And so we've got to get back to speaking one-to-one -one with people. And if you've forgotten how to do that, I encourage you to pray and say, Lord, remind me of how to do that. Because that's how it was done for thousands of years. Before all this social media crap came along, we spoke one-to-one -one with people, and it was powerful, and it was effective, okay? That's how Christianity gained a billion followers around the world, okay? And it wasn't through social media, okay? The disciples didn't use social media, okay? Peter and, and, and Paul and Timothy and all those guys, they didn't have social media, okay? They walked around, led by the Holy Spirit, and they were able to communicate with people, what the Lord wanted them to communicate. And it was powerful and it was effective. It wasn't from behind a camera. Now I'm not saying there can't be some good that comes out of the videos that we do. But is there anything more powerful than an interaction, a face-to-face, -face, you know, eye contact, seeing emotions and, and facial expressions and letting somebody feel the love that you have for them that is there to help them, not hurt them, not judge them but to help them heal and be restored. That's what our goal is, right? Isn't that what we're trying to do? And there can be knowledge learned from videos, but when it comes to bringing the gospel to people and, you know, and really making that connection, that emotional connection, that connection that says, I love you, I care about you, even a connection that shows that your eyes need to be opened because you're being deceived, you're being blinded by the world and all its technology and all its fun, okay? But this has to be done one-to-one. -one. I think that's the most powerful way. Maybe some of you out there are doing that. But I'm quickly coming to the realization that social media is going to pretty much cut us out. And... Um, you know, we had another story where a guy about Sandy Hook, and don't get me started on Sandy Hook, but a guy wrote a book, okay, called Sandy Hook Never Happened, and didn't matter if he wrote it as fiction or nonfiction or whatever, he wrote a book about it in his own opinion, laying out what he thinks actually happened in his own opinion. And now this guy was just ordered to pay $450,000 in damages to Leonard Posner. Remember, Noah Posner was his son at Sandy Hook, one of the first graders there. And now he's got to pay defamation damages to Leonard Posner's father because this guy decided to write a book saying that he believed that Sandy Hook never happened. Now, it's interesting because a lot of people... Our Holocaust deniers, there's tons of books out there saying that the Holocaust never happened, right? There's tons of books out there saying that uh, that Jesus never happened, that he never existed, that he never died on a cross, that, that all that was made up and fake and make-believe. 
and that offends me. So how come I'm not? I can't sue people for that, right? I wouldn't think about doing it, but they can get away with that. See, Holocaust scenarios can make movies and books, and they can get away with it. But if you doubt, if you dare doubt the narrative of Sandy Hook, you will be like Alex Jones, and you'll be wiped off YouTube, and wiped off Facebook, and wiped off Twitter, and wiped out of PayPal and everything else to try to cut off his money supply, which, by the way, hasn't worked. He's more popular than ever. But you can deny the Holocaust. That offends all the Jews. Yep, you can do that. You don't have to pay damages to them. And you know what's interesting about Leonard Posner? His son, Noah Posner, Sandy Hook victim. Okay. When the massacre happened, I believe it was in France, somewhere over there, not too long after that... They had a memorial, and you can find this on YouTube, they had a memorial wall of all the victims that died over there. And you know whose picture was right up on that memorial wall? Little six-year-old Noah Posner. They said he was one of the victims over there. Now, how was he a victim over there if he died at Sandy Hook over here? Interesting. But who knows? I digress. See... Speech is being cut off and limited. And we see tons of circumstances like the guy who had to pay the damages. And it's creepy because even the Supreme Court of Connecticut is backing these guys and making people pay damages. So whatever the heck happened over there, it has gone all the way to the upper levels. Now I encourage you to look into Illuminati. And look up Illuminati Pyramid, which we all know about the pyramid, whoop, whoop, right? But if you look at, I'm trying to find a way to word this right so that YouTube doesn't cut me off on it, but just look up a pyramid scenario at Illuminati. Just look those things up, and you will see everything that you need to know. That's, I'll just leave it at that. It's including everybody from the very, very high top all the way down to the local level. That's all I want to say about that. But you see, this is a perfect example of what's happening to Christians and conservatives all across the world, especially in this country. And our speech is being abridged, and there's no recourse about it. Now, when some of these cases actually you know, get to the United States Supreme Court, I'm hoping and I'm thinking that things will fall down on our side. But the reality is, if we keep thinking we can use social media or mass media to espouse our views that disagree with what the world culture says is right, then we're kidding ourselves. It's just not going to happen. So we got to have some courage and get back to the one-to-one -one talks, okay? Now, switch gears over to Turkey and Syria and that whole situation. Again, you got the doomsday preachers. Oh, this is the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38. It's going to bring about the end of time. So here we go. Let's set a date. We can stop setting dates, please. Is it true that the prophecy in Ezekiel... The countries listed there, okay, is it true that those names translate into Russia, Syria, Iran, Egypt, okay, and Turkey? Yes, they do. All those countries are part of the Ezekiel 38 prophecy, which will lead to World War III, which will usher in the Antichrist and the one world government that the Illuminati is pretty much almost completed doing right now with the Pope at the head, okay? Now, this is all taking place. So in Syria now, you have Russian troops, you have Iranian troops, which is ancient Persia. Russia, of course, is the bear of the north. You have Turkish, obviously, Turkish troops are in Syria now. And you have them all in Syria battling for their goals. And there's a prophecy that says Damascus will be destroyed. It's true. It's a prophecy that has yet to be fulfilled. 
Now, Damascus, Damascus is the capital of Syria. There's been fights there before. There's been some ruin there. But basically, the prophecy says that Damascus will be destroyed. It will be unable to be lived in. It'll be inhabitable, and it's just going to get wiped out. Now, is that still to come? Absolutely. Has it happened yet? No. No, it hasn't happened yet. So there are things happening in the world, on the world stage, political and militarily, that are fulfilling prophecy. There's no doubt. And what that says to me is, while prophecy is moving forward, right, and time is running out, and a whole bunch of us out there are spending our time on YouTube and Facebook trying to, like, quote Bible verses and tell people that Jesus is the way, right, we're wasting a whole lot of time. And I've seen that especially. And some of you out there would say, well, you're only saying that because you only get 10 or 12, 15 views now, and you used to get 50 or 100 or 500 even. But that's not why I'm saying it. I'm saying it because I know why I'm getting less views. It's not that the material or the content has changed. It's because YouTube's algorithms and their way that they block certain search words and keywords and all that stuff is getting in the way now. That's, that's what's going on. So that's why I'm pointing this out. There's a double standard, which we all know about, right, where we are being told what we can say pretty much and what we can't say and we can't dare go against the narrative the official narrative or you're going to have to pay money you're going to get sued you're going to get silenced so what do we do we pray we ask the lord to guide us in our words guide us in our direction which way should we go how, who should we speak to how do we say it what do we say when do we say it where do we say it? That has not to do with social media. Right? It's one-to-one -one personal interaction. It is what Jesus did, and it is what the disciples did, and that is what millions of Christians have done around the world for thousands of years. And I'll tell you something. I think it's part of the enemy's plan to get Christians away from that and say, here, be safe on social media. Here you go. This is your new avenue now. This is where you can do it. Look how many people you can reach. Right? And again, there's some benefit to that, but it's not as powerful and effective as one-to-one -one interaction. So as prophecies are being fulfilled and the times are getting short, Christians are secluding themselves more to online and less in person, less interaction, and being less effective. Now, I work on doing that Less and less and less every day. So I'm still doing these types of videos, but as you see, it's not as much. Because I'm really trying to focus more on reaching people that are right in my world every day. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Okay, now, let's switch gears to something else here. All the alien talk, okay, it's, it's really hyping up a lot. And you say, oh, the alien talk's always been hyping up. Okay, yeah, I know that. But what we're seeing now is all this stuff about Mars, and now they're saying that you know, NASA scientists have confirmed that back in the 70s they actually found life there, and they've been covering it up. And what they're doing is they're incrementally getting everybody accepting of the fact that there's life on Mars, life on Mars, there's life on Mars, over and over and over again. And it's such a gradual thing where people aren't going to freak out and go crazy. You know, the latest poll shows that over 70% of people now believe that there's life, there's aliens, if you will, on, on Mars or on other planets. And you see, that's all part of the goal. Because as the prophecies are being fulfilled, as militarily and politically the world is becoming a one-world government for the Antichrist, that means the rapture, the catching away of the church, is getting closer, and you know that that's what's going to be said. That... Aliens came and took all these people away, took me away, took all you believers out there away. Aliens, and then it's not going to be so hard to believe, right? It's not going to be hard to believe at all. They're going to say, oh, of course, oh gosh, now save us. Save us, world government. Save us from the aliens. We're scared. We don't want to be taken away too. Please save us, save us. And the Antichrist is say, I got a plan. Don't worry about it. It's all good. I'm going to keep everybody safe. Just come and follow me. As the Revelation says, come follow me, take a mark on your forehead or in your right hand. Oh, that just sounds like gobbledygook, man. What are you, that's conspiracy stuff. Of course, they're 
currently right now implanting chips in people's right hands. And people are getting these barcode tattoos like they're a piece of property or something and they think it's cool. They're already setting the stage for the tracking and the location of everybody and the acceptance of these tattoos all over the place. So when it comes time to get a tattoo of the Mark of the Beast, there'll be no problem for the people that are left behind. It's all coming together. And we have a responsibility to go and tell people what's happening and how close we are to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ for the rapture. And again, people, rapture happens first, then tribulation, then the second coming. If you disagree with that, comment below and we can have a nice discussion about it. Okay? I'm tired of hearing these people talking about, you know, the second coming as the next big event. The second coming is when Christ comes back and steps foot on the Mount of Olives, splits that sucker in two, and destroys Satan. Everybody here that's left that followed Satan is destroyed. He sets up a new kingdom here. And the Christians will live here on earth with him for a thousand years. There's your second coming. The rapture is to catch away. The actual word is rapio, R-A-P-I-O, which means to catch away or to snatch away all the believers so that they do not endure the wrath of God because we are forgiven. Just as the animals were saved on the ark. Couldn't, couldn't God just make new animals? Why save the animals? How about because they were innocent? They didn't do anything wrong. All the other people got washed away, but no one his family and the animals. There's a message there for us. We don't have to be here during the tribulation period because the wrath of God is not for us. Amen to that? So let me wrap this up and say, let's get back out there and talk to people one to one. Pray in the Spirit for opportunities. Look for avenues. And I'm going to tell you something. With Whether you're talking about sports, whether you're talking about weather, whether you're talking about politics, whether you're talking about how many changes a particular area has had, there's always opportunities to bring the Word of God and build bridges within those conversations. And you'd be surprised what the Holy Spirit will do if you'd be willing to do that. So let me encourage you to do that. And again, like and comment, subscribe, and I uh, hope you take the words to heart, and I hope to see you again soon. God bless you guys.